Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we are going to look at an example problem in support vector machines. Now, the question here is, assume that you are using a linear SVM and if alpha 1 through alpha 4 are the Lagrangian multipliers for the four data points given above, we have to write the precise expression for the Lagrangian dual optimization problem. So we are especially interested in the dual. So remember that there are two optimization problems that we solve. One is the primal. When we solve the primal, we reach the dual and then we solve the dual to get the final values. So we want an expression for the dual. the objective function that we are going to maximize and remember that SVM optimization problem is a constrained optimization problem so we also want to write down the constraints that need to be solved in order to solve for values of alpha 1 through alpha 4 and when we solve for alpha 1 through alpha 4 our optimization problem will be complete and then our we will get the answer. So notice that we only want to write down the expression here. So that's what we will do. So first, let's write down the expression without thinking about all these data points and all the other things that are there uh, in the question. So just let's remind ourselves what is the dual formulation of the SP SVM optimization problem. So we have uh, max over alpha because we are solving for alpha and remember we had w of alpha a function in alpha which is equal to sigma i is equal to 1 to m where m is the number of data points and for each data point there is a constraint there is an inequality constraint that it is outside the margin so there are as many constraints as there are data points and that is given by m alpha i lagrange multiplier minus half sigma i is equal to 1 to m sigma j is equal to 1 to m remember we have two indices here that run from 1 to the number of data points because we are going to multiply one feature vector with another inside right that is a kernel that we talked about in the videos for SVM and that's why we have two sigma here alpha i alpha j y i y j x i transpose x j now this is the entire objective function we have only written the objective function here and then we have two constraints the first constraint is alpha i greater than or equal to zero this follows from lagrange the lagrange multiplier values are always greater than or equal to zero and notice that we ignore the slack variable here c If C is included, the constraint becomes alpha i greater than or equal to 0, alpha i less than or equal to C. And we have just ignored that and made this simpler. We are only interested in the formulation without the slack variable because the slack variable is not really mentioned in the question. So we are going to stick to that. This is just for additional understanding and I'm just going to leave it here. But this is the constraint that would be required in the answer and there's another constraint right alpha i y i is equal to zero right so now we this is just the dual formulation so we have not used anything from the question here so the question if you look at it very carefully it's very simple because we are just asked to substitute the values that are given in the question in this dual 
formulation to simplify it further and derive a specific dual formulation for the problem in hand. Now, what are all the things that we can substitute? So let's start with the constraints alpha i y i is equal to zero so we have values for for y right and let's say so we're going linearly in i so i is equal to one y value is one so simplifying this constraint alpha 1 times 1 plus oh there's a sigma in front which I forgot alpha 2 times minus 1 plus alpha 3 times minus 1 plus alpha 4 times 1 is equal to 0. Now simplifying this we get alpha 1 minus alpha 2 minus alpha 3 plus alpha 4 is equal to 0. So now this is a uh, constraint for this particular problem, right? Because we have used the values of y to derive this constraint. Now, what is the next thing that we can do? We can simplify the objective function to this problem. So let's start with the simplest step first, max of alpha w of alpha is equal to sigma i is equal to 1 to 4 because there are only 4 data points remember m denotes data points alpha i minus half sigma i is equal to 1 to 4 sigma j is equal to 1 to 4 alpha i alpha j y i y j x i transpose x j right so we included the value of m here for this first step now what else can we do to simplify this further we have values of yi, yj, xi transpose and xj. We have these values from the data set. Now we can, this entire thing is not a variable anymore, right? We are only solving for alpha, remember? So all these things are known to us. So these things again should go away so that we can simplify this optimization problem further. Now to do that, it is just a simple matrix multiplication, right? So we have X transpose. We can do this transpose. right and then we have xj and we also have values of y to multiply to these two now for each value of i we are going to go through all the values of j because there are there is a double sigma here right so let's first construct the first value 
that is x equal to x i equal to 1 and j equal to 1. So I'm going to go through a couple of values here so you get the idea. So let's say this is i, right? 1, 2, 3, 4. And let's say j, 1, 2, 3, 4. Right? So let's multiply i equal to 1. And j is equal to 1. Now we get value of four and we also have to multiply y i equal to one and j is equal to one so that happens to be one so four times one times one which is nothing but four now let's go to the second value of i and first value in j now this is the value is two right minus 1 times minus 2 2 times now here we have i is equal to 2 y is minus 1 for j is equal to 1 y is 1. Right? Now, multiplying this completely, we get minus 2. Now, let's move to this third value in i. 1 times minus 2. Now, that is minus 2. Minus 2 times minus 1 when i is equal to 3 y is minus 1 times when j is equal to 1 y is 1 Alright, so the fourth value in i, 2 times minus 2. Now that becomes minus 4 times 1 times 1, where j is equal to 1, y is 1, i is equal to 4, y is 1. Now you get this value, minus 4. So now we have gone through i completely. Now what we do is we increment j, right? It's just a double loop, right? Now we increment j. And i resets to 1 minus 2 times minus 1 that is 2 times when i is equal to 1 y is 1 when j is equal to 2 y is minus 1 so 1 times minus 1 so we get the value of minus 2 Now we progress again similarly in i, going to the next value. Now again we follow through 
multiplying x i and x j y i and y j so we if we continue to do this then we get the values i'm just filling in the values because the computation is similar So that is the multiplication of yi, yj, xi transpose xj inside here, this entire matrix. Now, can we do anything more here? No, because we are solving for alpha. Everything else we have substituted using the data. Now, this would complete the answer for this question. We started with the dual. And then we substituted all the known values here using the data that was given to us. All right, now moving on to the second question. Do you think you will get zero training error on this data set if you use linear SVMs? Now for that, let's consider the data set. I've reproduced the data set here for convenience. We can use a simple trick to solve this problem. We can plot this on a graph to understand whether a linear SVM would classify it perfectly. Since we have only one dimension here, x, only one x, right? So it's a single dimensional data. So we only have one dimension here for x, and now we can mark minus 2, which is 1 in green here, minus 1, which is negative in Y, in red. And we have one value of 1, which has minus 1. So we mark this in red and we mark value of 2 in x with a prediction of 1 in green here. So we are using the color scheme green is 1 and red is minus 1. Now, we can see that in single dimensions, if we have just one dimension, this data is not linearly separable. So, we have a green here and on the other side, these two green points bind the red ones on the outside and hence, we cannot use a line to separate them correctly. So we need a circle, maybe a curve to perfectly classify these points. So hence, the answer for this question is no. SVMs, linear SVMs, will not get zero training error. On this data set. And the reason is that the data is not linearly separable.